Oh, hey, and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So it is summer, which for me means reading some summer romances. I also will have a separate vlog where I'm reading some summer fantasies, which is another thing I love to do in the summer is read, you know, a whole bunch of fantasies that involve like sea, ships, pirates, all of that. We'll see which of these comes out first. I suspect this one might, but look forward to that if it's not already out. But I also love reading summer romances that have to do with vacations, weddings, all of that kind of stuff. I, I love reading romances that feel like they should be read during the summer, hanging out on the beach. So I have a couple that I've read so far for this vlog and I have more that I have planned for, for this one. So the first one I read was The Secret Bridesmaids and this is by Katie Burchell. And this one actually doesn't take place in the summer, which I did not realize upon starting it, but that's okay. Still dealt with the wedding and still kind of gave me the vibes that I was looking for anyway. So this one, you're following our main character who is a professional bridesmaid. So, um, so Sophie, is a professional bridesmaid. What she means by that is, you know, of course someone can hire a wedding planner to help them plan the wedding and do all of those tasks that might come along with that. But there's also, she's tapping into a market of people who don't necessarily want someone else to plan the wedding for them. They have a very clear idea of what they want. They don't need someone else to make decisions for them or you know, kind of take control of the decisions. They still want to make all of the decisions. They just need to help with the many, many tasks that come with that. So, or, you know, clients who just kind of want discretion and don't necessarily, anyway, she, she has kind of found her market, not as a wedding planner, but as someone who can be there with them throughout the planning process, not to plan for them, but just to kind of help give some support, give some guidance if they want it, but otherwise just kind of help them get through their task list um, to be able to put these weddings together and to be there with them on the day and kind of pretend to be a bridesmaid. And so she'll, you know, they'll come up with a cover story of you know how the bride and she met and why no one else has kind of heard of this person <laughs> and so you know they'll come up with a cover story they'll come up with whatever they need to and she'll learn about her brides so that she can kind of pull off her character um, but really she just helps them get the details you know eyes dotted t's crossed get some of the things done uh, for putting some of the final touches on their wedding and she loves it. She loves weddings. She loves every little detail. Um, she's very, very focused and organized and just, she loves doing what she does. And so one day she is contacted by a former client of hers who says, hey, so I referred you to a friend of mine and I think this friend of mine might want to hire you for her daughter's wedding. And Sophie says, great, thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm happy to meet with this person. And it turns out the person that she's meeting is a Marquess. Is that how you say it, Marquess? And is, you know, part of British high society royalty. I'm not exactly sure how that all works, but part of British royalty-ish, essentially. Um, so, you know, very well known, very rich family. So that's part of why the discretion is is there as well. Um, so they want to be able to have someone help who isn't necessarily going to be in the spotlight, isn't necessarily going to kind of care about the glitz and glam of it, but it's just going to be someone who can just kind of help keep things focused and just get some tasks done without kind of getting into getting bugged by the press or, you know, kind of getting into that part of it, but just can kind of help the Marquess's daughter kind of focus on wedding planning. And the Marquess's daughter is not, not on board at first. So normally Sophie is hired by the brides just for some help 
Um, but in this case, she's being hired by the bride's mother because the bride is very much not on board with having a secret bridesmaid. She kind of perceives it as her mom wanting to like push a friend on her and like having to pay someone to be her daughter's friend and you know and she's trying to tell her no I'm not paying for you to have a friend I just want to make sure that all uh, you know everything comes together for your wedding exactly the way you want it and so for some of the things you just kind of have to roll with it so you kind of have to roll with some of the unique things about her job and you know couldn't the Marquess just hire some wedding planners, like a team of wedding planners? Sure. Uh, but y you just gotta roll with it. Okay, and then, so the Marquess's daughter at first is kind of a bitch to our main character because she is trying to get Sophie to quit and trying to get Sophie to just back out and say, all right, I'm out. Like, I don't want to do this. And so... She is, oh, I'm trying to hold it such that there's not a glare. Um, so she's trying to make Sophie's life as miserable as possible while she's helping plan her wedding or, you know, do some things to kind of move some, move some things forward for the wedding. And, it, you know, begrudgingly, she comes to, you know, she comes to kind of embrace... Sophie's role, embrace Sophie, they kind of develop a friendship despite the initial circumstances and Sophie is just very persistent and you know is focused on doing a good job so that she can really convince the Marquess's daughter that she should be there, that you know they need her help and that she can provide something of value in this process and um, you know, and she's she's not going to give up. She is hired by the mother, so the daughter can't fire her. Um, but, you know, she's, she's just persistent because she knows, one, you know, she's going to be well paid for this, and two, it's going to open up a bunch of opportunities for her. Um, and so, you know, she's, she's trying to do her best. Um, but, yeah, she does form over time forms a friendship and kind of comes to an understanding with the Marquess's daughter. And so really it's about their friendship and their relationship developing and, you know, about her going through the process of trying to, to help put this wedding together despite a bunch of obstacles. It was cute. It was fun. Uh, I had a great time. <laughs> the narrator was really good. Uh, I just had a fun time with this one. I love books about weddings and oh, that you know kind of center around weddings and this was just kind of a unique fun one and I had a great time listening to it. I really liked the uh, kind of the aspect of you know kind of British royalty or high society being involved. I just thought it was a fun element and it was fun to watch. Sophie do her work and just kind of get through and kind of try to see things from the bride's perspective and just do her best to be there for her even if she was making it really really hard at first um, but yeah it was cute it was fun if that at all sounds intriguing would recommend is it something that I'm gonna shout from the rooftops about and you know reread every year because it just was that great for me no but I think it did a great job for what it was trying to do and I think I feel very similarly about the next one so the next one is Lucy checks in okay slight change of angle here because I needed to plug in my camera so that it can charge while I film these clips but I felt very similarly about the next one I wanted to talk about for this vlog, which is Lucy Checks In by D. Ernst. So in this one, you're following a 40-something uh, named Lucia or Lucy, who basically her life has kind of fallen apart. So she's been in the hotel industry her entire career, and her former husband, former husband, former partner, um, not only cheated on her, but also basically stole a bunch of money and ran away 
essentially. And so she had to go through a bunch of questioning by the FBI because money has been stolen. And, you know, she's kind of left to answer a bunch of questions that she had no involvement in any of that. And so she, you know, has done her best to, and this all happened before the story starts. So, you know, she basically had to pay all of the money that she had saved up to get a lawyer to kind of help her through this process of being questioned by the FBI and all of the activities at this hotel that she used to work at with her husband, you know, kind of going through the process of all of that being scrutinized so that they could come to the conclusion that she in fact didn't do anything <laughs> to aid in him stealing any of that money. And so, you know, she doesn't really have any money because she spent all of it on a lawyer. You know, that relationship has obviously fallen apart. And so she's penniless, doesn't have a job, is no longer in that relationship. Like, you know, kind of, things have kind of spiraled out of control. And so she's living with her mother and recently accepted a job in Rennes, France to kind of bring an old hotel back to life. And when she gets there, she doesn't, she hadn't quite fully understood the level of disrepair that this hotel was in. So not anything too bad in terms of a lot of heavy renovations needed, but there's a lot of plaster that needs to be replaced. There's a lot of cleaning that needs to be done. Basically everything needs to be, you know, either cleaned or repaired to kind of bring everything back to life. And she didn't quite know the extent of the work that needed to be done to the actual hotel. She thought she was gonna be managing some of this process and being able to kind of bring the hotel back to a state where they could actually put up a website and start to make reservations. And so she doesn't really understand that she's going to be the one painting and doing some of this renovation work. There are others who are doing certain parts of it, but she didn't realize that she was expected to do some of that renovation work herself, and she doesn't have any experience with that, um, even though she has experience in the hotel industry in a lot of different capacities. And so she's taken off guard, but really doesn't have anywhere else to turn and really wants to kind of stick it out and stay with this contract that she has. It's a six month contract. And so in the process of, you know, renovating this hotel, bringing it back to life, getting this website set up, um, you know, getting to know the staff of the hotel uh, or the people who live there who are going to be some of the staff or just people who live on site. Um, you know, she's getting to know them. There's a cafe across the street, so she's really just getting to know this town and just kind of falling in love with this town and with France and with the people that she's working with and, you know, this hotel. And she's, you know, finding herself really connected to her work in a very different way than she has been before. And so it's a really simple, quiet story. It's, you know, there's not... There's not huge, there's not, you know, there's not huge action. There's not some grand antagonist who, you know, is trying to make things difficult for her. You know, like there, there's not, it's a very simple story about her day-to-day -day life working to get this hotel into shape and kind of doing some of the renovation work, some of the design work, getting the website up doing a dry run so that everyone could kind of be prepared for the opening, going through the opening. Maybe there's a little bit of chemistry and romance with one of the other people in, you know, that lives at the hotel and is going to be one of the managers it, it, or at least play some role in the hotel. Anyway, so like it's it's not it's not a story with a bunch of action. I wouldn't even consider the character work like particularly top-notch or anything, but it's just a very quiet, cozy story about a woman kind of finding herself again in her 40s when she thought she already had her life figured out and needs to completely reconfigure her life um, and go through the day-to-day -day motions of 
bringing this hotel back to life. So if that, so like I can very easily see someone reading this and being like, this is just boring. Like nothing happens. She paints a wall, <laughs> right? So I can definitely see that being someone's reaction to this. But if that is something that you're in a particular mood for, would recommend. So I just want to make sure that you know exactly what type of story it is before going into it if it's something that you're interested in. So like don't expect high action, you know, don't expect there to be like this grand rising rising action and then resolution and like she she just she gets through her task list <laughs> her task list of what she needs to do um, to help make sure that this hotel can open and get reservations <laughs> and market it to an American audience too. So if that sounds like something that you are in the mood for, would recommend. But know that it's, know what it is before going in because otherwise I could very easily see, see someone just saying it's boring and then DNFing it. <laughs> So those are the two that I've read so far. Um, there are definitely some more summer romances planned on my list in the near future. So I'm sure I'll be checking back in with this vlog very soon, hopefully to actually catch you in the middle of reading some of these maybe, but honestly, these go by so quickly that sometimes it's hard to check in as I'm reading one and like do a mid book check in, but we'll see. We'll see what I can do, but there definitely are some more summer romances on the list. So yeah, I'll be checking in very soon. So I've read another book for this vlog, and that is The Layover by Lacey Walden. And this one was fun, it was cute. This one follows our main character, Ava, who has been a flight attendant for quite a while, and she's going on her last trip. Uh, before she before she quits her job and she's you know has just gotten engaged to her boyfriend she's planning on having kind of a career change and settling down with him and not traveling quite as much and you know goes on this last trip there's going to be a layover in Belize and she one of the other flight attendants that's working this trip is someone that she has had a bad interaction with in the past. Um, actually, the interaction itself was good, but there were some external circumstances that made her make some assumptions and draw some conclusions that may or may not be correct about this man. And so she's working this last flight, this last trip with this other flight attendant who you know, she doesn't necessarily want to be working with, but she's trying to just get through her last trip and then be able to kind of start a new chapter in her life. And the plane has some mechanical issues as they're on this layover in Belize. And then, you know, so they need to stay there an extra, an extra night. And, you know, things happen from there. And she starts to realize that some things that she thought about this other flight attendant weren't true. Um, she's realizing that some things about her relationship and kind of the decisions that she's made about what she wants out of her life maybe, maybe aren't actually what she wants and maybe she wants to continue to continue her job and continue working as a flight attendant that she, you know she really loves her job and you know maybe she wants to continue and she wants to see see where things go in her life if she continues working uh, but you know is that going to threaten the relationship her fiance had made it clear that he, he didn't want her to kind of have a, a job where she's traveling that much she wants to kind of see if they can settle down and so she's trying to figure out a lot of things about her life. Um, you know, was it predictable? Yes. Was it cute? Yes. Was it fun? Yes. Did I 100% believe the romance? Not really. Maybe it just happens too quickly, at least for, for my taste and for my believability, because they're, you know, it's not like they're staying weeks and weeks in Belize, right? Like they're staying for an extra, what, night? I think it was one night, maybe two. 
past when they were originally supposed to to stay and so <laughs> I don't know things just kind of happen quickly which can happen when you're in that kind of forced proximity with someone so you know anyway but it was fun it was cute I had a good time and yeah would definitely recommend I actually enjoyed so one of the comparisons um, or one of the the similar books that this is compared to is Shipped by Angie Hockman. I think I've enjoyed that one more than I enjoyed this one. Coincidentally, Angie actually uh, blurbed this one. Um, but I, I think I prefer Shipped to this one, but I still had a really fun time with this one. So yeah, there definitely are some more summer romances on deck, so I'm sure I'll be giving an update soon. <laughs> So here to wrap up this vlog, I've read at least what for the moment is going to be uh, my last summer romance. Maybe there will be some more that I sneak in throughout the summer, but we'll wrap this vlog up here and then we'll just see what happens. But I did read The Wedding Crasher by Mia So. So this one was so much fun. Perfect for a beach read, just a nice summer day out at a winery with a glass of wine, that kind of vibe. This one follows Solange and she is the cousin of the person of the main character from her previous release. Um, so she is helping her cousin with one of her weddings and sees the bride with someone who is not the groom and confessing her her love for this other person and you know the bride saying look i love you you know if this is gonna happen you need to step it up or like you need to step up now we need to see what can happen there, there's some physical contact and and so our main character is like wait what <laughs> what is happening clearly the bride and groom are not not quite on the same page here and she is originally just going to leave and just exit the situation not insert herself because she has literally just seen the bride she has one quick interaction with the groom and then you know she, she doesn't feel like she can interfere even if the romantic part of her wants to uh, but her cousin ends up encouraging her to stay for the ceremony. It's an important wedding for her that she's planned. So she wants her cousin to stay. And then, lo and behold, in the ceremony, she pipes up and is like, No! <laughs> like, this can't happen! And everyone's like, Wait, what? Who are you? <laughs> and why are you... Why are you trying to ruin this wedding? Anyway, and you know they end up calling off the wedding and it was kind of an arranged not really an arranged marriage in the way some other uh, romances might be but arranged i mean in the sense of like or i guess a very transactional wedding and relationship i guess i'll say so they're both trying to achieve particular things they do care for each other but you know they they don't really have what what some might feel are romantic enough feelings for wanting to be married and but you know they care for each other they feel like they work together well in a day-to-day -day routine and they both will help each other accomplish certain things and just kind of will be a good match on paper and that's initially good enough for them to feel like they want to go through with this wedding but having Solange pipe up makes them kind of reevaluate, and they, they do end up calling off the wedding and saying, look, we can probably find something that's going to be better for both of us, and, you know, we wish each other well, but this probably, probably wasn't the right move for us. Uh, so they call off the wedding, and Solange is like, oh, shit, what did I just do? And they... So she's, she's trying to just move on with her life. So then some things happen at Dean's work. He's a lawyer and they're trying to get a lawyer who's moving to the area to join their firm. Uh, she's a very competitive candidate so she's interviewing with a few different law firms. They're trying to uh, they're trying to get her to come to this law firm and 
Solange also has a situation where her mom kind of ropes her into needing to get a fake relationship together for her cousins coming to come visit. Um, and so they, they, they both have need for a fake dating situation. Some things happen and so initially Solange is actually going to ask her roommate to pretend to be her boyfriend but circumstances happen and so she and Dean end up being in a fake relationship for things that they need to kind of get through in their life and you know of course end up falling for each other along the way I really loved their dynamic their dynamic was so cute the banter was a lot of fun I just really enjoyed Mia Sosa's writing and I was pretty sucked in I was sucked into the just the world again I love the family dynamic here as well uh, and that's one thing I really loved in the worst best man as well was just the family element here and so I think that part is written really well and just really brings you at least brought me into the story and if I also love their connection then you know I'm, I'm there for the ride and so I had a really great time with this one I feel like if you enjoyed the worst best man I, I feel like I feel like you'll also really like the wedding crasher I had also checked out love and olives I'll try not to get the glare to be too bad. I also did check out Love and Olives from the library. This is by Jenna Evans Welch and I realized I wasn't in the mood for a YA contemporary romance and so I'm just gonna return this to the library. I do want to read the series. I read um you know maybe at least 50 pages or so. Maybe it was more than that. I read a I read a bit at the beginning and I actually the narrator for the audiobook was really good I was into the writing so I don't think it's going to be anything to do with this book I just want to return to it when I'm in the mood for a YA contemporary summer romance and that just wasn't the mood that I was in so we're just going to return that and maybe next year I'll be in that mood next summer I mean so we'll see if I'm return to that one next summer and I just wanted to make sure I was in the mood or I'm I'm not going to enjoy it as much as I could potentially enjoy it and so I want to give the book the best shot um, to be something that I enjoy. Anyway, so yeah I've had so much fun with all of these summer romances. It is just tis the season at least where I am and so I always have fun reading reading summer romances and just having a good time with them so thank you so much for joining me if you've read any of these i would love to hear your thoughts and of course subscribe for more bookish content i will leave information down below including my socials and more information about how you can support the black lives matter movement and i will see you in the next one bye everyone